heaven. We just come to you. Yes. Oh, it's a highway to heaven. None can go there but the beautiful. Oh, it's a highway to heaven. We're walking up in Kenny's highway. Father, well, you didn't say that it was going to be easy. That's right. You didn't say there would not be any mountain, any, any pitfall, or anything on the way. But God gave him still. None can go up there but the pure in heart. So, Father, we thank you for right now. Lord, always. Lord, as I stand first of all before you and as I stand before your people, I place my seat in my hand. And I'm going to place you out front. Hide me behind the shadows of your cross that I will not be seen. Nor will I be heard, but your spirit simply speaking through me. And Father, right now, as always, Lord, I realize that I cannot even walk without you holding my hands. Lord, I realize that no matter how high I get, I just keep looking up to you. Father, Father, it's always, Lord, if you can use anything, Lord, Lord, you can use me because I'm just a nobody. Simply trying to tell everybody about somebody who can save anybody. My clothes the Lord is always. I simply give myself away. In Jesus' name, I pray. Let us all say, Amen. 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 Our scripture again came from the book of James, James chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. James chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. James chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. I was telling the other writer, I got a call from our, our long service <laughs> on my way. <laughs> I didn't answer it, but I listened to it after I, I said, that number looks familiar. You know, they have all kinds of numbers. But I pray God that the school don't burn down. Amen. amen. But I pray to God we keep it. So amen. But yeah, I got to do God's bidding right now. Amen. Amen. I deal with that lady this evening sometimes. If anything go on there, call me back. Amen. 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 Again, that scripture with James chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. And the Bible reads, and it says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have a perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire wanting nothing. Amen. Let faith have its perfect work. Amen. If I would give this message the title this afternoon, it will simply be entitled, It is in the darkness that our faith is tested. It is in the darkness that our faith is tested. Or it is in the darkness when our faith is tested. And as God's children saints, we all will find that we are not exempt. From the text and the trials of our faith. Darkness will at times overtake us. It will overtake us. And the testing of our faith is all the reason why. All the reason why you're going through your troubles, all the reason why you're facing your trials, the only reason why you're going through some dark times right now is because your faith. Has been, has been tested. Your faith has been your faith is in its testing mode right now. It is our faith that Satan wants to destroy. As long as he knows that he can get our faith, he can get us. Amen. And that is something that we all need to understand, brothers. So we know we come to say, all oh, without faith, it is impossible to please God. We say all these scriptures, but say, Satan, if he tried to destroy anything else, it is our faith. It is your faith. It is my faith. And James here is telling us, brother, sister, that sickness will come. James is telling us, brother, sister, that financial hardships will come. James is telling us that family problems will come. Marital problems will come. Children will be disobedient. And brother, sister, and the rain will fall. So, but, but it all happens because it is tested our faith. Yes. But James said one thing. He said that we are to count it 
But all oh, joy, no matter what you go through, no matter what you're faced with, no matter how difficult it is, no matter how high the mountain is, no matter how wide the valley is, James said that we better learn to count it all oh, joy. But how can we count it joy, say? How can we count it joy when you're going through some trials? How can we count it joy when our faith is being tested? How can we count it joy when we're walking in darkness? How can we count it joy when sickness is knocking at our door? But James said we have to learn to count it all joy. Why? Because he's working on our faith. And if he's working on our faith, brother and sister, he's going to teach us how to be patient. So why did Jesus, there was something that Jesus said in Matthew four times he talked about their faith. Four examples he would give us. The first example is this, Matthew chapter 6, verse 30. So why did Jesus rebuke those disciples? He gave us four examples. First, the Bible says this, brothers and sisters. It is a time, brothers and sisters, he tells us we need to take no thought. On the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter 6, verse 30, he says this. Now, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is, is thrown into the earth, Will he not much more clothe you? Oh, ye, a little faith. Okay, why did he say this? He said it, brother and sister, because he was here. First of all, he was letting us know that in this Christian walk, you're going to be tested. That's right. Your wants and your needs are going to be tested. He said, that we're not God. And you know the whole thing, how I saw Take no thought for your life, what you shall eat. Or what you shall drink, or what you shall put on. You know, God, he, he, he provides for the sparrow. He said, they don't work, they spend not. But to him, the Father takes care of them. He doesn't do that gather into bars, but he looks after them. He said, when you look at the lilies, lilies of the field, how beautiful they are. He says, Solomon, in all of his glory, was not arrayed like one of these. But the problem is this, brother and sister. We don't know how to trust God and know that God is going to provide for us the next day. That is why Jesus said, Brother and Sister, that is why he said, Oh ye, a little faith. It is your faith. We have to trust and know, Brother and Sister, that every single day, no matter what we're going through with, no matter what we're faced with, God is going to take care of it. For the Bible tells us in Psalms 37, 25, they said I was young, but now I'm old. But yet have I seen the righteous forsaken on his seed begging bread. All David is trying to tell us that God is going to look out for us. He said that your bread and your water would be sure according to Isaiah 33, 16. Come on, come on, come on. So no matter what we're going through, God said I'm going to look out for you. He says when you're hungry, I'm going to feed you. It may not be what you want, but I'm going to give you what you need. Because Philippians 4.19 tells us, God will what? He will supply all of our needs according to his riches in heaven. So brother and sister, see, what Christ was trying to tell them is that when you start worrying about what you're going to eat, say <laughs> that. when you start worrying about what, what I'm going to put on, oh Lord, I, how, how I'm going to get to work, Lord, well, I'm going to pay my bills. He said, don't you take no thought because no matter what the situation looks like, right. God always has some way to provide for us. Don't mean that you're lacking faith because you might call somebody and say, oh, my rent is due and I want to know if you can help me. They may not be able to give you the toll. Well, rent now so high $1,200, but they might even give you a dollar, but don't worry about it. You almost a dollar than what you were. That's all that matters. God said, I will supply. I will provide. He said, he's going to look out for us, say. And so we got to prepare ourselves, say. We got to start worrying about tomorrow. Because they're all ye a little faith. It is the faith. It is your faith. It is my faith, brother and sister, that, that is going to be tested. And so therefore, when we don't see 
said, Lord, how in the world are we going to make it? God, I don't know where this is going to come from. Lord, I know that my children are hungry. God, I know that the bills are due. But he said, oh, you a little faith. That's right. He said, why are you worried about that? I know that's right. He said, look right. at the sparrows. We can get up in the morning any time. Look at those birds. Those birds are going to find them something to eat. They can go down to the ground and start picking around in that grass. And next thing you know, brothers, they don't pull up a word. God said, I take care of the sparrows. He said, they don't gather into bonds. He said, they don't go, they don't whine, they don't sow anything. He said, but your heavenly father takes care of them. He said, aren't you much more to me than they are? He said, we are more to God than the spouse. That's right, he says that. We were created in his image, out yes. of his likeness, brother. Yes. And so he asked us, where is your faith in us? That's right. That's oh, right. you a little faith. What are you worried about? Come the songwriter said it like this. I don't know about tomorrow. Yes. Uh -huh. I just live from day to day. Uh -huh. there you go. That's right. I don't borrow from the sunshine. Yeah. For his skies may turn to gray. Uh -huh. I don't worry over the future. Uh -huh. For I know what Jesus said. Yes. And today I will walk beside him. Yes. For he knows what is ahead. Yes. Jesus already yes. knows, brother and uh -huh. sister. Yes. Yes. Don't you worry about tomorrow. Yes. When you go to bed and you lay down safe, you got to be able to lay down in peace. Yes. And know yes. that he's going to look out for us. Yes. And Amen. know that he's going to wake us up. Yes. And know gonna have that yes. he's gonna provide for us yes. the next day say we gotta stop worrying about tomorrow right. he said oh ye right. yeah. right. a little right. faith right. say right. our faith is That's being right. tested yeah. in the midst yeah. of our darkness yeah. when you're hungry your faith is being tested right. when your bills are due your faith uh -huh. is being tested yes. Yes. when the children are acting up the faith yes. is being tested mm -hmm. say when you're sick in the body your faith it's been tested. Oh, ye, a little faith. The next thing Jesus said in Matthew 8, 26, he said, but he said unto them, why are you fearful? Oh, ye, a little faith. The storm had arose on the sea. The disciples, they were in the boat. Remember when Jesus said, let's go to the other side? Uh -huh. And when they were on their way to the other side, brothers and sisters, the Bible says, when Jesus had fallen asleep. Uh -huh. And there was a great storm that came up while yeah. they were going to the yeah. other side. Yeah. The storm was so great that the disciples, they had never seen anything like it before. Uh -huh. And they were trying to do their best to keep the boat afloat. And the Bible says that the wind was blowing in and the waves were coming into the boat. Mm -hmm. And it got so bad that the disciples, and when a flash of lightning came, they saw Jesus sleeping. Oh, and yeah. they went the boat. And they cried out, Master, care thou not that we perish. Master, care thou not that we perish. And the Bible says that Jesus got up. And he stood up in the boat. I, I like the way they say, see, sometimes we may not catch it. Now, the boat is already rocking in the river. The wind is already blowing. Waves are already getting in the boat. So the Bible says, but Jesus stands up. And what that means, brother, sister, that means authority. That means that he knew that he had authority over what was taking place. He was letting the winds know that I don't care how hard you blow. I don't care how hard the boat is rocking and rolling. I'm standing in authority. He gives us authority, brother and sister, to stand in the midst of our storm. No matter what it looks like, no matter what's going on, brother and sister, he says you have authority to stand in the midst of your storm. That is why when you're going through stuff sometimes, and folks don't understand how in the world is she dealing with that. How in the world is he dealing with that? It's because Jesus has given you authority to stand. How can he walk with his head up like that? And I know what his child just did. How can she hold her head up? And I know that her husband just walked out on her. It's because Jesus has given you authority in the midst of your storm. We may be going through that storm, brothers and sisters, but no matter what, he asked the disciples one thing, oh ye, a little faith. You see, it's all about our faith that is going to be tested in the midst of our storms, in the midst of brothers and sisters, our cares of life, 
our faith is going to be tested. And Jesus asked him, oh, ye of little faith, why? why are you worried about this? Do you know who I am? I'm Jesus. Don't you know what I took before we got into the boat? Do you know the miracles that I have worked? Haven't you seen me heal the folk? But yet and still, you worry about a storm. But brothers and sisters, the storms will come. And they're going to come, brothers and sisters, in every single way. But Christ and long as Christ is in our life, brothers and sisters, there's no need to wear it. Right. As long as Christ is controlled, there's no need to wear it. I'm here to tell you, Saint, that he would just sit in the midst of our storm. Yeah. And just see how we're going to act. Yeah. Just to see how we're going to carry ourselves. Oh, ye of little faith. See, the storms are going to come from the inside. And they're going to come from the outside. But see those storms on the outside, as I say, years ago, so you can run from those. Yeah. You know, you can duck, you can hide from the storm. Even as a ranger, you can run, you can duck, and you can hide. But brother, sister, when there's a storm on the inside, it is something different. See, the disciples were dealing with the storm on the inside. They couldn't run, they couldn't duck, and they couldn't hide. But what they did, they forgot about Jesus, brother, sister, until the lightning flashed, and they saw Jesus and said, Oh, ye of little faith. Yes. See, our faith is going to be tested. Yes. Brothers and sisters, in the midst of the darkness, in the midst of the things that we're yes. going the darkness of the storm, and the darkness of our struggles in life. Brothers and sisters, our faith is going to be tested. Yes. Oh, ye of little faith. Our faith will be tested, brothers and sisters. And when our faith is tested, saints, don't you know there are three kinds of storms that come? All right. The first of brothers and sisters, the storms, that we cause on ourselves. Yes. Yeah. That's right. That's right. See, yeah. see, saints, you need to look at yourself sometimes. Say, right. God, if I'm the reason for this storm that I'm going through, mm -hmm. it happens. That's right. For well, the Bible right. says in Proverbs 19, well, 3, he says, our own folly yeah. leads to our ruin. Right. What are you talking about? Yeah. You see, David would have never gone through yeah. what he went through, brother and sister, if he had not messed up. But see, because of the fact that David messed up and did all the mess that he did, God told him, David, for that reason, the sword is going to always be at your house. Yes. See, David allowed and David caused the storm to come in itself. Yes. It was because of what he did, the reason that storm was there. When you look at Samson, Samson would have been all right if he just would obey. God said don't have nothing to do with them. God said Look, your strength is in your hair. You're not supposed to tell anybody. But Samson did it. Yes. Told them where his strength lies. Yes. Samson went down the team and he started messing with somebody that he knew that he was not supposed to mess with. And so Samson began to call for storm, his own storm, yes. to come into his life. Yes. You see, saints, there are times when we need to ask ourselves, yes, God, wait a minute. Yes, what is going on? And we look at where we are. Yes. And we look at what we've done according to Proverbs 19, verse 3. Yes. It's because our own storms to come. That's right. Some of you are dealing with some sicknesses, and the reason why you're dealing with them, think about what you have done over your lifetime. Come on, come on. Oh, Lord, this hurt and that hurt. Look at the lifestyle that you were living before you accepted yes. Christ, or you allowed Christ to come back into your life. Yes, come on, say that. Lord, I'm all, I got all these ulcers, and I got this bad stuff problem in my stomach. I got, got back problems. I got this, and I got that. Think about what we have done to ourselves. Oh, people come in us sometimes. Think about how we act and we treat people. So we cause our storms to come in sometimes. The second storm, brother, sister, it, call, it is caused by others. Jeremiah 17, 5, the Bible says this. Curse is the one who trust in man and whose heart turned away from God. He said, brother, sister, curse is the man when you turn away from God. When we turn from God, brother, sister, and start looking to man, things begin to happen. Things begin to take place that we didn't expect to take place. And because of that reason, brother, sister, we allow them to get the best of us. Look at Moses. Moses, brothers and sisters, his storm really wasn't himself. His biggest storm was his people. Moses messed up. Now, he could have been one of those that caused some of this storm. But when Moses was leading the children, brothers and sisters, 
to the promised land, his stones are from the wall. The hard headed, stiff necked, complaining, murdering folks. Brother and sister, you look at Jeremiah. Jeremiah, he got him upset. Why? Because the people were not listening. He's preaching and pulling her heart out. And the people just wasn't listening. They were ready to kill him. They were ready to stone him. They put him into prison. But since the next storm was caused by other folks, all he had to do was just trust God. Do what God had called for him to do. And everything would have been all right. Lamentation 337 said it like this. Who can speak and have it happen if the Lord has not decreed it? Saints, sometimes God sends people in your life. Just to get under our skin. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. God seeing people. Yes, sir. Sometimes just to see where we are. To test your faith. God seeing people to say something to you that you don't like. Just to see what you're going to say. To test your faith. God seeing people to get under our skin to make get us furious. But he's trying to test yes. our faith. He said, for the Lord had decreed it. Brothers, so when you look at Job, what was going on with Job? Everything was happening in his life. All the tests, losing everything, lost everything. But God decreed it. He told Satan, you can go and mess with it, but you better not do this to him. You can mess with it, but you better not take his life. You can go in, you can do what you want to him, but you better not hurt him. That's all I'm saying. And brother, sister, well, how, why did it happen? Because it was to test his faith. Because what did what the Satan say? Look, if you allow this to happen, then he's going to curse you to your face. God allowed me to come in and to be worked up sometimes. It happened because God wanted that way. Saints, the big storm is this. It's a storm that is caused by God. But I like that kind of storm because that's a storm that God calls us. Mm -hmm. For the Bible says in Lamentation, I mean the Bible says in John chapter 1, verse 4, But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea. And despite of how big your storm is, you got to remember that your God is big. Yes, despite sir. of what you're going through, yes, God is bigger. See, God will decree your storm. And God allowed Jonah to go through a storm. Why? But God allowed that storm to come. You see, when God allows a storm to come, there's mercy. You see, there's grace. But the thing is, he's still testing our faith. He wants to see if we can stand in the midst of this storm. He wants to see if we can make it in this storm, brother and sister. And you look at Peter, brother and sister, one day. After Peter was walking on the water, this is the, uh, the second one. Matthew chapter 14, 31. The Bible says this. And immediately when Peter was walking on the water, and immediately Jesus stretched out his hand. And he caught him and he said, All ye, a little faith. All because of a storm, because the wind, a wave, came between Jesus and Peter. Saints, what we need to understand, there are going to be some days in our lives where some trials and some situations are going to come. And they're going to try to block your view from Jesus yes, Christ. Yes, they're going to try to block your view from what God yes. can do for you. They're going to try to make your darkness in darkness to make you feel like God is not there. Yes, God is not answering. Even when you're praying that God is not answering your prayer. The Bible says because of the way, when God, when that way became, came between Jesus and Peter, Peter went down. He lost all hope. He forgot all about Jesus on the other side of the way. But I'm here to tell you, no matter what you're going through, and all the ways of your life, Jesus is always yes, on the other sir. side. But not yes, only sir. is he on the other side, but he's walking as well in the midst of your trouble, yes, in the midst of your storm. When we can't see him, brother and sister, we must know that he is still right there. When we see one, when we see one set, as it said, a footprints in the sand. When you see one set of footprints in the sand, it is then he says that I carry you. Yes. That's why the songwriter said this, when my eyes fail to see yes, that he is able, I'm going to tell you that he's able. He's 
disabled. And then he went on to tell them in Matthew 16, verse 8, he told them about Jesus being a word and said, and said unto them, Oh, you have a little faith. And what he was saying here is when they were talking about the leaven and the bread, and, and he had just fed the 4,000 and the 5,000, and, and the disciples didn't understand what Jesus was talking about. And he was telling them about the Pharisees, you better watch out for them, because they, they, they're not all right. But the disciples misunderstood what Jesus was saying, and sometimes we misunderstand the voice of God. God is trying to tell us one thing, but we want to do our own thing. <coughs> God told us to go this way, but we say, Lord, no, I'm going this way. God said, no, you better walk straight, but oh, we want to go to the back, saying, and I'm here to tell you, see, the disciples, they brothers and sisters, wasn't listening to what Jesus was saying. And then because there are times when we don't listen to his voice, brothers and sisters, our faith is going to be tested. Our faith will be tested. And the final thing we need to understand is this, brothers and sisters, we need to know who God is. We need to know who God is. For the Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, he said, But grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In order for us to have faith, in order for us, our faith to grow, we got to learn to know who Jesus is. We got to learn to know who God is. Right? When we get to know who God is, brother and sister, we don't worry about our trials. We don't worry about our troubles. We don't worry about our struggles because we know that God is our apple and our omega. We know that God is our bright and our morning star. We know that God is the lily of the valley. We understand, brothers and sisters, that God, he can stand, he can speak, and everything will obey him. We know that God still has all power in his hand. But the problem is we don't get to know God. Peter said you got to know him. You got to know God, Satan, even though I know I'm going through a trial right now, but I'm not worried about it because I know that God got my back. I know that God understands what I'm going through. I'm going through something, but I got to know without a shadow of a doubt that he said that he will put no more on me than I can bear. That I can bear. I already know this. I already know that he told me that his light affliction yes. is just for a moment. Right, this day ain't going to last yes. all week. Yes. Yes. I already know as he told Paul, except you abide yes. in the ship, that ye cannot be saved. Yes. The storm is going to come even in the yes. church, yes. but that's all right. Yes. I trust God enough yes. to know yes. that it's going to be all right, that the whole ship of Zion is going to make it through. Yes. Yes. But what is happening for us is the same is just testing our faith in the midst of all of our darkness. That is why Paul said, well, I have fought a good fight. Yes. I have kept the faith. I have yes. finished the court. Now is laid up for me a crowd of right. Well, see, he said, I have kept the faith. In the midst of the fight, in the midst of the darkness, in the midst of the battle, he said, I have kept the faith. Well, so that our faith is going to be tested. And I'm here to tell you, saints, if it haven't got to you yet, you better hold on. Just, just wait long enough. Yes, sir. It's going to get worse than it ever has been before. Uh -huh. So we need to start preparing ourselves for the things and the tests that have come. We don't want to hear those words, oh, ye of little faith. We don't want to hear those words when he come back. The reason why we're not being able to go to heaven is because of our little faith. We even got to have faith to know that he's coming back, brothers and sisters. We have to believe and know without a shadow of a doubt that Jesus Christ is going to return. He said, I'm not a man. God is not a man that he shall lie. For he that shall come will come and he's not going to tear. He said, behold, I come quickly. But the devil is messing with our faith. How long have you been hearing that he's coming back and he ain't came back yet? Look at all the stuff you're going through. The worry is that he ain't came back yet. Look at what's going on in the world, but he ain't came back yet. Oh, you don't lost some of your loved ones, but he ain't came. The devil is working on our faith. But it is in the darkness. It is in our trials. It is in our struggles. It is in our battles, brother, sister, that our faith is being tested. So it's going to be tested, saints, but the thing is, when we pass the test, oh, ye a little faith. Oh, ye a little faith. Oh, yeah, a little faith. Every song they, they, they couldn't even do it. Lord, what are we going to eat? What are we going to drink? Lord, what should we put on tomorrow? Oh, yeah, a little faith. 
Lord, carry us out not that we perish. Oh, ye of little faith. Peter walked. Oh, ye of little faith. The leaven in effect. Oh, ye of little faith. Our faith is going to be tested. Sir. And we got to prepare ourselves for the trials and the test of the Lord. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. He said, look. If you're around with a foot, and they have weary, yes, uh -huh. yes. what are you going to do with the horse? What's going to happen, sex? What kind of faith are you going to have? Are you going to be able to trust God when you can't trace Him? Are you going to realize and understand, Lord, when I'm at the end of the road, I already know, God, that you're going to steal, that you're going to give me that strength to hold on. God, when I can't see my way, I'm walking through, and my eyes are filled with tears. God, are you going to still lead me to where I need to be led to? God, are you going to still save my children? God, are you going to help me in the midst of this sickness? Where is your faith? See, the devil, the devil is testing our faith. He wants you and he wants me, brother and sister, to deny God. See, when our faith gets strong in God, brother and sister, the stronger our faith gets, the stronger the God that we have. The stronger our faith gets, the closer to God we become, brothers and sisters. So no matter what you're going through, in the midst of your darkness, in the midst of our trial, in the midst of our test, our faith is going to be tested. But it is darkness that will allow us to show us what we're made out of. So when you're going through your trials, when you're going through your tests, just hold on. It's going to be all right. That is why, brother and sister, he said, but let, verse 4, but let patience have a perfect work mm -hmm. that you may be perfect and entire and wanting nothing. Let faith have its patience, have its perfect work. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith work of patience. Saints, if you can remain faithful, it teaches you to be patient. Lord, I don't see the sun right now, but I know it's going to shine. Yes, yes sir. Lord, I, I, my body don't feel the best right now, but 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 I know, God, that you want to heal this body. Yes, Amen. Amen. And even if you choose not to heal Amen. on this side, mm -hmm. but I'm going to trust and know, God, that you want to heal me on the other side. But I'm so not going to let your hands go. Mm -hmm. God, I'm going through this storm right now, but, it, but that's all right, Father, because I know that you want to speak to the storm, but somewhere you're going to speak to this storm and it's going to cease. Yes. God, you're going to supply our needs. Bills yes. do. I'm hungry. Kids don't have cold, but that's all right. You've already told me that you will supply all of my needs. That's so true. You told me don't worry about tomorrow. Don't, don't worry uh -huh. about what I don't have. Don't worry 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 about For that reason, for that reason, the devil is trying to get the best of us. But we got to let Satan know that no matter what you do, no matter, no matter how you try to come at me, I am still going to trust my yes, God. I'm going to be like Joel. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. When he has tried me, I'm coming forth. There's no If the devil has been testing your faith, I just want you to stand where you are. If you've been going through a test, if you've been going through a trial, and the devil has been trying to test you. Oh, yeah. He'll test you in your family, mm -hmm. test you in the home, oh, yes. test you on the job, oh, yes. test you at school. Mm -hmm. He don't care, Saint. Test you in the church. Yes. He don't care. But we got to realize and understand, but it's all about our faith. Yes, it is. It's all about our faith. He's mm -hmm. trying to weaken our faith. And I'll press you, Lord, I just pray that you will strengthen my faith in you. God, I want to be so close to you that in spite of what I go through, I know that you want to see me through. Father in heaven, we want to say thank you right now. Thank, thank you, Lord. Lord. Thank you. Lord, it is in the darkness where our faith is tested. The darkness of the storms. The darkness of our needs being met. 
The darkness of our walking in the midst walking before you. The darkness of the world trying to speak. Lord, we cannot hear your voice. Lord, but let us hear your voice. Let us not turn our eyes off you despite of what goes on. Even in the midst of the storms and the ship, let us, Father, realize that you are there. Even when our wants and our needs, God, let us remember that you said that you would supply all of our needs. I pray that our water will be sure. Lord, and if you choose not to heal us on this side, let us remain so faithful in knowing, God, that you're going to heal us on the other side. Father, as we stay in God, we all are going through something in our lives. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And we're going through it, Father, because, Lord, it's just testing our faith. Mm -hmm. God, all we have to ask ourselves the question, Lord, which storm? Is this one that I caused? Mercy. Is it one that you caused? Mercy. Or is it a storm from somebody else? But whatever this storm is, whatever it is God, God I know it's just trying to test my faith. And by this storm trying to test my faith, Father, I know that it's going to be all right. Yes, Lord. So, Father, we leave this place this afternoon. Let us leave this place knowing that we can trust you. Yes, sir. Even the times we cannot trust you. Yes, sir. When we leave this place, let us leave this place and know in your God that you are our healer. That you are our provider. Yes, sir. That there's no need for us to worry about what we're going to eat, what we're going to drink, or what we should even put on. Yes, so sir. Sure. Look out for it. Yes, Lord. And Father, soon and very soon, you're coming yes, back. Yes, sir. And I pray, Father, because of the fact that our faith has been tested and because it has gone through the test that it has become so strong, because of our faith has become so strong that it has worked patience and perseverance in our lives. So in spite of what we are going through, Father, what we are going through, we already know, Lord, that we're going to make it through. Yes. That we're going to see you on the other side. Yes, Jesus. Help us to be strong. Help us to stand firm. Yes. Help us to hold our hand up. Mm -hmm. Help us to trust you in the midst of all that we're going through. And Father, be the grace of God. Yeah. And the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit. Yes. Rest on the vine with yes. each and every one of us. His for and forevermore. In Jesus' name, I pray that us all say, Amen. 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 You may be seated for a moment of silent prayer. Thank you.